if you do just basic high school chemistry, if we can get hydrogen and CO2 from seawater, you have the fundamental building blocks right there for making any hydrocarbon fuel you want. Burn the fuel, it'll go into the air, it'll get absorbed in the ocean, pulled out of the ocean, turned into the fuel, burned and back into the air. So you, your car works beautifully just as today, but it's not running on oil, but it's still running the same fuel you have today. It's not a real airplane, I admit it. However, you're looking at it in the air, flying on fuel that was made from seawater and electricity. What do you do about civilian aviation? Are we going to move to a world where only the highest of our elected officials fly around the world and the rest of us get to walk? Because there is no substitute for aviation fuel if you want to get in the air. We're not gonna have solar powered aircraft. We're not gonna have hydrogen fuel powered aircraft anytime soon. We're looking at some total radical technology breakthrough if you wanna fly. The hydrocarbic acid in the ocean is in equilibrium with the CO2 in the atmosphere. It's a very simple test. Seal up a fish tank, fill salt water in the bottom, don't let any air into it. Run your probes in there, pull carbonic acid out of the bottom, read your CO2 level in the air above it, and watch the CO2 level in the atmosphere drop. Every time you take a piece of carbon out of the ocean, it is the same as taking it out of the atmosphere. It will pass from the air into the water. So when you send an aircraft up in the air and it's running on fuel you made by taking carbonic acid out of the ocean, you have a virtual carbon cycle. You are not adding CO2 at all. It's carbon-free fuel that is carbon and burns in our existing engines.